pushed one button after I you know, sorry about that. Go ahead. Ah, okay. I've got to make that go you've away. Gotta, just... Yeah, you've got to approve it. Sorry. Got it. <laughs> so um to quickly summarize, I spent 20 years teaching transcendental experiences, they solutioned everything. It didn't really work for me. There were too many problems left behind. Jer, forgive me for interrupting you. It was working for others. Uh, it was right? working for, for my depression went away within the first oh, six beautiful. months completely. Oh, beautiful. But it didn't do everything. And I wanted everything. everything. I wanted intimacy at the emotional level. I wanted my heart open and it wasn't. I wanted to, this experience of the divine. And that's what led me to the next phase. So I was doing this muscle testing one day and I said, there must be some way instead of having to find my wife to push my arm down, I could test myself. And lo and behold, my neck went like, whoa. And I went, well, that's fascinating. Now I have all these food allergies and a tick, but that wasn't what happened. I got a gift. <laughs> and that gift was, I could ask a question of the divine of spirit of source and lo and behold, my neck would answer it. It would say yes or no. Wow. And, and I could find out foods. I could find out how many vitamin pills or not vitamin pills, but moreover, I could find out what people had in their unconscious. What was their limiting belief that was blocking them, holding them back? And moreover, what is the emotion that was caught up in the limiting belief that made the limiting belief feel true? It's those retained emotions that make the limiting beliefs feel true. And that's when I started my work and it's been fantastic for the last 30 years. Wow, that's, I, I, I love that path where you talked about it wasn't, it, you know, it appeared obviously, I mean, I don't want to say appeared, you obviously knew it was helping others. Yet, oh yes, you were still struggling. Yeah, and were you were open enough? I've got to say, after doing that and those successes, to explore further. I I love that about it because some maybe I don't want to say some people get stuck. Yes, yeah, some people do get stuck. <laughs> but but if you if you feel you're helping other people, yes, and. That's and I was wonderful, no yeah, wonderful, wonderful feeling. Yet you had that recognition that it wasn't, and and went to explore instead yes. of saying, "This is what I do, and this is how I've got to be." So true. Well put. Well, that drive, I I appreciate that with you. When you were writing, you at the beginning of the book, drops of wisdom, guidance on the path of awakening, Doctor Moss, you write about. You, when you were doing your PhD, writing the first seeds of this book were sown while I was writing my dissertation, yes. Education and the Growth of Consciousness. And I could go on and on, but what was, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I was doing my dissertation on uh, Maharishi International University. And they, it was a wonderful opportunity at the University of Texas to dive into a case study of how consciousness affected education and then write a dissertation on education and the growth of consciousness. And I got to read all these books that I always wanted to read but never had time for. And now you had you had to read them for the generation. So you had to make time for them. And really that's where Drops of Wisdom started, Louis, because all these beautiful quotes I started writing down on three by five cards and putting them in a file folder. And they were so beautiful. They touched me so deeply. They said so much brilliance in such a small space of words that they, it, they combine knowledge and experience and that's what makes wisdom. So these little quotes became drops of wisdom. And then I could add 30 years of my experience as an intuitive counselor to those drops of wisdom, which is how I wrote the book. Again, the book available on Amazon. We've got links up at louisfreeshow.com, louisbfree.com, and wfmj.com. I think that's everything. I think. I don't know. I've cool. Got, I've got to double check with the young techies. But again, uh, 
the book is so well, I, I can't even find the word for it. It's so meaningful when people read it. It's so and yeah. you stop. And my experience was I I wanted to move on, you know, I wanted not not time wise, I wanted to know what's next. Right. Yet I forced myself. Didn't really have to, I'm sorry. <laughs> we did you force yourself? Well, it wasn't forced in that. So what what yeah, I talk to myself and answer all the time, Doc. I've got to, you know, I, I people it. always say in the olden days, they would say, um, it's okay if you talk to yourself, you know, as long as you don't answer or some, something like that. And and then my response was, well, then who's listening? And I, you know, I explore stuff. Seriously, I mean, it works for me. It may not work for everyone. But the when I, I wanted to sit with some of the things and not, yes, not just like get a taste and move forward. I mean, yes. it, it was interesting because that for me, just for me personally, maybe others, that's not easy for me to do. Uh -huh. I have to, when you said, you know, you were able to read the, I'm not comparing the two. This time you had to force yourself or you had to make the time, not, not right. that it was forceful to read what you read, all the, the things that you always wanted to read. For me, it was like, sit with this a minute. Don't just, oh, yeah, that's great, and move on, even yes. though I wanted to know what's next. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going on and on. Oh, no, no, I love it. I <laughs> love it. it it's, it's like I get to sit with you, and we, we have this passion for something together, and to share it makes it even so much more wonderful. We, and you're getting great response to drops of wisdom. And I get, let's hit, let's talk about that for a minute now. Sure. Great, great response. Tell us about that for you. Um, I was very touched when um, Dr. Bill Little, who was my mentor for yeah. um, many, many years, uh, just a brilliant teacher, described it as a modern spiritual, um, um, what was it? Modern spiritual oh, I've got classic it. or something like that. Uh, uh, a masterpiece, masterpiece of spiritual, spiritual literature. literature. A masterpiece of spiritual literature. That's it. And that was so beautiful to my heart that I was able to sort of demonstrate the growth that I had gone through to a beautiful teacher. And then I was able to uh, get wonderful responses from people that, that I have admired all my life. And they loved the book, too. David Rico, um, How to Be an Adult in Relationship, uh, is a beautiful writer, um, inspired me a lot and inspired the first chapter, a way of looking at unconditional love through the five A's, attention, affection, appreciation, acceptance, and allowing, and that he would appreciate and comment on my book I, it was thrilling, just thrilling. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, Dr. Rick Moss, when you say that again, I'm jumping all around here. Uh, forgive me. I'll jump with you. Lily. That, that, thank cool. you. You're great. You're great. I love that. The When you talk about unconditional love, I hear that this is going to sound judgmental. No, I know this. People will use that term, yet I don't feel my my judgment that they. It, it doesn't mean to them what it means to me. And I love how you lay it out. I love how you lay it out in the book because it's so important. People need to go through the steps to best better understand if they want yes. to know or be unconditionally loving of someone. Yes. You making sense? <laughs> oh, total sense, because I really think it comes down to love, but not like. The ego's version of love is what I call like. It's like, I like chocolate ice cream, but we say I love chocolate oh, ice cream. Yeah, that's So great. what does that mean? It means I take pleasure from chocolate ice cream, but I give nothing to it. That's not love. That's like, and the ego's version right. is what the ego does. There's nothing wrong with that. We're always gonna have a little ego there, but it's not who we are. And when we get to this experience of love for no reason, love with no boundaries, love that just floods 
the universe, man, that's the real thing. That's that's what I that's what I came for. And, and I, like, yeah. I like how you, I like how you say that. <laughs> I say a lot, you know, because again, that people will think that you're you're taking you love if you say you love chocolate, it's a great great example. Yet you're giving nothing. You're that's consuming. Right. It's one way. You can and there's really nothing like, wrong with that. Really like chocolate. A lot you can. I, I, I really like chocolate a lot too there's nothing wrong with it but we don't want to confuse it with love because love is about expressing what flows through us the divine moving through us into the world and it's that energy that heals so in the inner child work that i do it's that energy of unconditional love that actually heals the memories and the wounds from the past that's beautiful. When you about the past, and I'm again, yes. I'm jumping all around Dr. Rick Moss, but my feeling again, you're you've got expertise in this. I've got my personal experience, but I always say, and no one's going to see the air quotes, you deal with it, whatever it is, or it will deal with you. And that is how I feel. Again, when I'm talking about like sexual abuse, my personal, I, whatever people's issue is, you deal with it or it will deal with you. Yes. Yes. It controls you. Makes sense to you? It totally. It becomes an addiction. It becomes an empowerment to the ego. And the ego then starts running the show rather than learning how to get out of the ego back to the spirit, back to self. Awakening greatness. Tell us about that, if you would. Well, that's where I went when I realized that there is a field of being, of divinity, of grace in us that is empowered, that is filled with light and grace and love. And that empowerment makes life really beautiful. It's not identifying with the limited ego, the fears, the judgments, and the the stuff that's stuck in the ego. It's really about getting out of that and finding the love that heals that. And that's what awakening greatness is. Yeah, as opposed to what continues. As opposed to lear learning head learning. It's yeah. gotta be, head is great, but it doesn't do the transformation. You can't do it from here. You gotta do it from here, from the heart. That's beautiful. Again, um, you can go to essentialpathways.com and I will say also dropsofwisdom.net. We've got those linked up and you can go directly and to get the book, to order the book, get the book that I highly recommend. It's a beautiful Thank book. You. And again, numerous times and I am, I don't want to say too sensitive or overly sensitive, but I teared up at a lot of things that I read. Which oh, that's so really, beautiful. Really, well, it's, it's beautiful. It is. I mean, it was beautiful for me because it impacts, it impacts me, impacted and imp still impacts me. That's the whole thing is leaving our heart open so that the world touches us. If we build those walls and close out the world, we close out ourselves from, from the divine. You, you were talking, we were talking off here about what you do um, in, about clearing and tell us yes. a bit more about that. Well, that's been the 30 year work that I've done. I work with individuals. Um, I do it over the phone or Zoom. I train people to do this work for themselves. I've trained people all over the world to do this clearing work. And what the clearing work is, is really finding where a limitation, a block is, and then bringing the light of love to it in a particular way that uses visualization. Why visualization? Because the subconscious can't tell the difference between real and imagined. So visualization allows us to do what we need to do very specifically, very directly. And we have to get into the past as it's stuck in our mind because there is no past in the unconscious. Everything is now. That's the downside. So if you didn't feel loved as a child, you don't have it stored as I wasn't lovable. You have it stored as I'm not lovable. Mm -hmm. 
That's why it's so powerful still. That's why you can't just get over it. It doesn't work that way. Now, the downside is it's still there functioning as if it were now. But the upside is because it's still now, you can actually give the love to that hurt part of ourselves that didn't get it. And it will transform that part to the awakened part of our heart. And that's what clearing is. And when you, because obviously you feel very deeply, it's obvious reading the book, or talking with you, you feel very deeply. When that, I shouldn't say aha moment, when, when you know that it's reached someone. Yes. That's got to feel, that's got to be amazing for you. Wonderful for you. It's a thrill. Um, um, I remember one client saying, they, I was working with them. They said, I only have 15 minutes. Can you help me? Okay, let's see what we can do. So she said, I have this problem. She described it. I could find it. We worked on it for 15 minutes. And she said, it was like you reached into my mind and pulled out the problem and it was gone. It was like six months of therapy in 15 minutes. That was pretty cool. That was fun. Yeah, it's, it feels good for you. you your desire to, I understand you need, you need to define a path to, to help yourself. Yes. Your desire then to share it with the world or help other people. Where do you think that comes from in you? I think that's love in action. I think love is now such a big part of me. I think my heart really does flow a great deal um, with enthusiasm and vitality and love and life. And uh, I, I'm, I'm in the most wonderful love relationship I could have ever have imagined after working through very difficult relationships. And gosh, my life is just filled with love. Again, I, that's beautiful. And I highly recommend the book. Folks, get the book, read the book, links up. Go directly to Amazon. You can get it. Drops of Wisdom, Guidance on the Path of Awakening. Can you tell us a little bit more, Dr. Rick Moss, about the process of clearing? Got it. I can tell you, um, or I could do it, depending on the, how much time we can allot to it. I can do it in, in any amount of time that you tell me. We've got to the top of the hour, so I've got about uh, 17 minutes. Oh, I can do it in five minutes if you like. That, that, well, you know, again, I don't want to. I don't want to put a, 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 an exact time on it because this is what you do. That's, let's that let's, would be great. let's that do would a be short great. version. Yeah, that would be great. No one will know what I'm talking about until they experience it. Right. This this will allow everyone listening to actually experience for themselves, what clearing, what's transformational based on love, experience, and wisdom and knowledge taken inside will do. So let's- Dr. Mosh, I'm, 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 I'm in my family called the king of the bad analogy. And this may sound trite, but so I hope you're not, I, I, I feel- I, I will feel, not. I, I don't think I you're, I think, I don't feel you'll be offended, but it would be, you, you can describe it to someone. And how I would think it's like, trying to tell someone what a certain food tastes like. Exactly. Well, it's an apple. So how do you describe what <laughs> yeah. an apple tastes like? I'm thinking to somebody that's never tasted an apple, they have to experience Perfect. it. What a great I analogy. Mean, I love it. <clears throat> thank you. I'll tell family that you, Dr. Rick Moss said, I came up with a great analogy today. Thank you. <laughs> <Let's go laughs> ahead, All right. So shall we launch? Let's do it. Yes, yes, okay. please, let's. I think it's a wonderful right. opportunity for So you. with your permission, I'm actually going to do a little opening, sort of set me into the right connection. Or, oh, please. All healing that we do, we do in the name of love, in the name of presence and goodness. We ask all goodness to facilitate this healing for all listening. So be it. All right, so I'm checking with my yes, no signal, and I'm saying, oh, guidance, what is it that you want me to work on? There's something wrong with me. 
Okay, we'll work on that, the limiting belief, there's something wrong with me. That's probably the most common limiting belief in the world. It lives in the ego because the ego isn't our true self. So from the ego's perspective, it isn't enough. There is something wrong, but we're not our ego. All right, so I'm gonna ask everyone if you would just feel into this thought, there's something wrong with me, I'm not enough. And you may feel something starting to stir in your heart, in your gut, that's triggering old stored emotion from childhood probably. Don't be afraid of it. We're gonna shine the light of love on it. So let it come up and let it come up in the form of what we're gonna call an inner child. So maybe this inner child, she's four, he's six, somewhere in that time frame. And imagine that child that you were feeling that you weren't enough, that you were bad, that you were wrong, sitting on a, a bed alone, just their posture may be crumpled, embodying that feeling of, I'm not enough, there's something wrong. Now, that's your memory. That's the emotion stored in there. But it's not who you are. Who you are. Imagine that you are looking in through the door or the window at that little girl or boy sitting on the bed, crumpled up, feeling not enough from your best self, your highest self, your most compassionate self. And put a little smile on your lips. Why? Because it activates 10 muscles in your face, which stimulates your brain to compassion. So as you look at that little person sitting on the bed, with that little smile on your lips, you'll feel this upsurge of care, of kindness, of generosity, of unconditional love, of God energy. Go into the room and say to that little person, I have come to be with you. It was never meant to be the person playing the role of your mother or father in this lifetime is the one to be with you 24 seven. They couldn't do it. Maybe they couldn't even do it at all. It's my job because I am you grown up and I have come to bring you the love that's transformational, that's healing. Spend a minute sitting with that child, putting your arm, if the child will allow you around his or her shoulders, saying, I'm here and I'm never going away. I am the one that loves sin, and I will be on your side, and I will protect you. So many children felt threatened or abused or harmed. You're saying to that child, I am going to protect you, and here's how I'm going to do it, not with violence or force, but I'm going to multiply myself by a hundred, a hundred loving adults, and form this circle of love around you. So if someone were to step into that circle to try and harm you, the love would be a hundred to one against them and they couldn't harm you. And I'm always going to be around you to protect you like that. Now, what we're going to do is grow up that child in this safety and love. Imagine a week of that child being so safe, so secure, so loved, so at peace. How would they change? That change is you growing into your best self. Now imagine a month. Don't imagine what you were like. Imagine what this child is like growing up in safety and respect and love. A month later, now a year later, keep shining that love on that child because the love is what's doing the work. And so how is this child? Let's say the child's seven now. How is she or he at seven if they have been protected and respected and honored and loved for a year or two years? They're going to start blossoming in a way that you didn't. But this is really you. That hurt child is just a memory. It's not you. 
that hurt child is waiting to be healed. This is the healing. So keep loving that child and bring that child now up to 12, not what you were like at 12, but what would this part of you be like if it had been loved and protected till 12? Keep growing it up. Imagine this part at 20. They would have different life experiences. Let them in your mind marry different people, have different experiences, have different work. Doesn't matter. It's a different facet of the diamond of your being. Let the child grow in this love. And let's bring the child all the way up to a maturity, say 30 or 40. What would that being be like having just blossomed in love and safety and peace and kindness and not being abused ever again. And if we were working in person, I would say, give me words to describe that child. Or if Louis, you want to give me a word to describe what that child would be like when he's grown up. Can you find a word? I can find lots of words. But Good. It's, give me a couple. Uh, it's just... I, I, I'm teary-eyed, and I'm, I, I'm... Oh, thank God for that. Oh, I love that you are, that you're honest about your emotions. Beautiful, beautiful way to go. I went through a lot of emotions when you're saying, go ahead, go ahead. So give me one word of what's that child like grown up? Oh, loved. 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 Beautiful. And loved and loving and graceful and happy and joyous and connected and that, Louis, that's us without our stuff. Yeah. That's us as our higher self, our true self. So my work is helping people discover who they are without their stuff. That was, that's beautiful. And I, I'm really grateful that, that you did that. And I'm sure it will impact a lot of people. Sure, certainly impacted me. I've never done quite that. I've looked at, examined, you know, been able to... Un understand things better again i don't i don't want to do a lot with this but having been sexually abused as a number of times by a number of people when i was <coughs> when i was young um i there was always a self-blame I, I used to think uh, let me do this quickly Don. no i get it i, I used do it to, slowly I, I it's so feeling, valuable yeah i kept feeling what was it about me what was wrong with me? What did I do to attract these monsters? What did, yes. And I came upon a picture of myself at one of the times that I, I was being abused. <laughs> and this little dorky looking, and that's like, it, that was like a revelation because how I was thinking about it was kind of how I am. I know not this old, but you know, that I was a mature adult and what did I do? You know, what, what was I doing to lure this type of person to me? And then it was like, wait a minute, look at the, you know, what could you have been doing? I mean, <laughs> I'm, I shouldn't laugh. I am laughing about it, but and it, that was a revelation for me. It really was. So beautiful. See, and when you say what you do now with this, the clearing, is powerful because it takes you back yet brings you forward yes yes differently gosh if you would ever let me give you a gift sometime i would love to do a real full session with you as a gift because that would be a gift to me uh, well, that would be so wonderful if you would allow me to i would be very grateful thank you seriously very grateful thank you again i mean here i am in my 70th year and I'm impacted, deeply impacted by what you, what the clearing, deeply impacted. It's, again, I feel that I have, you know, that I've recognized it, understand it. I was victimized. I'm not a victim today. You know, all that stuff, doc, you yes, know, that stuff. but that's all head. This, yeah. But it's this brings, head. yeah, this brings in a totally different dimension. That's it. That's I, why it would be an I'm honor to, to get to work. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. But again, it's surprising to me at my age. You know, you, you kind of think all that been there, done that, dealt with that, whatever. And I, I do have recognition. I mean, I, it, it was very healing for me. Very, yes, very healing. I follow. Very healing. Uh, 
Oh, I don't worry. Very quickly, I had an experience when I was in my 30s. I was getting ready to jog. I, I ran six days a week. And this will tell the age of it. I was putting my Walkman on and making sure the cassette player, making sure the batteries were good. And I was talking to myself, as I usually do, and I caught my eyes in a, a full length mirror. And I remember saying, like the person in the mirror saying to me, me saying to myself that you can tell that to somebody else, but you can't tell that to me. Mm. And I spent, I don't know how much time, may have been 15 minutes, it may have been three hours. I became a, like a puddle on the floor, just pouring tears and then pulled it together. And it was a powerful experience, wow. very powerful experience. Yeah, I For get me. it. Beautiful. And we've got to go into and what you're doing. And again, the book, I've got to get back to the book, Drops of Wisdom, Guidance on the Path of Awakening, is you open this for people, which is a beautiful thing. Mm. That clearing is just fascinating me. I'd love to teach you how to do it for yourself. I would love that. I would love that. We want to talk about, thank you. Thank you. That's a gift to me. But we want to talk about you and, <laughs> and your work. <laughs> Talk. I we'll do that. We'll connect good, you know, good. off off air. And, yes. and so again, when you do that with other folks and you see that yes. reaction, even seeing the reaction, I mean you yes, absolutely. Was wiping my, my yes. eyes and I was tearing. Yes. It's gotta be and I you know we talked about this a little earlier, gotta be very impactful for for certainly for them. But yet as many times as you've done that, or it do never that, gets old. That's it never yeah. gets old. It's I hear always that. Always like, ah, I love that. I, I love I that, that you're having that experience. Thank you. And I don't take I don't I don't take it personally. The thing is that guidance is telling me what to do all the time when I work. It's not coming from here. I'm saying, do I do this? Do I do that? Do I work with how old? Everything is coming from intuition. It's not coming from Rick. That's a better way of. That's better than talking to yourself and answering, believe me, because it's still me. It's trying to analyze, you know, talk back and forth, but that's beautiful how it comes from intuition, the guidance. The words, you know, I, there was one quote in, in, in the book. I actually quote myself. What page? Uh, who I'm quoting is not this ego Rick Moss guy. I am actually just uh, discussing what came through my mouth while do I was mind, doing a do session. Mind, what page? Yes, I'm on page 81. Okay. So if you're following along at home, page 81. Quotes about entering into a relationship with God. So here's the quote. And it it's you'll hear it. It isn't Rick Moss's ego saying this. God's love for you overflows from such a full heart that it floods the universe with light and whispers your name with such tenderness that if your heart were not eternal, it would melt. It's beautiful. It's, it, it's beautiful. And I love, prior to that, one of the pages I have to, uh, God is not your parents. God is not your parents. That's the big mistake. I promise you, almost all of us are making that mistake. When we're four, five, six-year-old, these powerful beings are godlike and whatever they do we think that's what love is and we think that's what god is and that has to be unwound and released it's, again i keep saying beautiful it is truly beautiful the book is amazing drops of wisdom guidance on the path of awakening uh, dr rick moss is my guest and the author of that book when and there's so much wisdom in it can you take a minute i know we're tight and I'm sorry I went off on so many different directions. Oh, I loved it. Are you kidding? But I just, if you, if you would tell us a little bit about your website, Essential. So, okay. So here's how it works, Louis. One clearing usually doesn't do the whole thing. It's like going to the gym to build a new muscle. You yeah. got to repeat and you repeat and repeat to go layer and layer and layer and layer because these events in your life, they happen to you over time. And those over times are little bubbles of memory and emotion. They have to be cleared, taken to the light. So 
I can't do all the work for the people that need the work. So they have to be able to do it for themselves. And that's why I created the website so people can do it for free. So they can go on the website, they can go through all the pathways and they can do the clearing. My voice takes them through it. The words take them through it. There's something called inner oracle cards, which you're able to say, so what's up for me guidance and how do I clear it? And in five cards, it will tell you what's up for you and how to clear it. So these things are all there for free. And that, that speaks a lot about it. Again, I understand people have to make a living. They've got to. So I'm not saying that, that people that charge for a difference aren't as open. I'm not meaning that as a negative, but that is a beautiful no. thing about Rick Moss because you want to share it from, from your soul, from your heart. Absolutely. Not, Absolutely. yeah. And, and of course, again, people have to make a living. Of course. People have to you charge for that so time. Much. Yeah, they need and need to. Yes. Yet you are so giving. And again, oh, again, no filter between my brain and my mouth. Sorry. I love that. I, I, I reading the book is very powerful and certainly tells me a lot about you, the author. Yet speaking with you and hearing that. And seeing you, if, oh, I'm sorry for listeners, we'll post up a YouTube and stuff later, but the, I feel it. I, that's what I want to say. I, I, I feel, again, I felt it reading the book about, wow, this, look at the, what this guy did. Look at what this guy's gifted the world. Speaking with you has been a joy, very powerful, from a, power, a joyful, powerful experience <laughs> for me. Thank you. Awesome. And me too. Thank you. I, too. I, I feel we're, we have a kindred soul here. And, and I, I really I feel, I feel thank you. I feel, the, I feel the same. So that means yes to a part two, right? Yeah, of course. So much more I want to talk with you about. Oh, gosh. Yes, please. Thank you. And we'll connect off here. Dr. Good. Ross, thank you so much. It's been an honor and pleasure and just powerful speaking with you. Can't wait to speak to you part two and personally. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back. How powerful. Again, this is a book that you, you know, I, I rarely say that you need to read, but I, then why, why do you use the word, but I obsess about, but doesn't it kind of negate what you just said before? Here we go talking to myself. Yes, but <laughs> so this is, this is a book really that you need, need to read regardless of your age, even me and my ancient years. So, so powerful. Okay, we'll be back. I really appreciate it.